All right, so cycle three. Okay. Um, we are going to talk about osteoxes this cycle. So in this past three cycles, we've been in phylum chondrixes, or sorry, phylum chordata. Um, and then we've been looking at three different classes of fish so far. We looked at agnatha, which is your jawless fish, right? And then you have chondrixes, which is the cartilaginous fish, which we talked about last cycle. And then this cycle, we have osteoxes, which are bony fish, okay? So osteoxes, oste means bone, ixes is fish. So these are the bony fish. And then one of the characteristics that they have to have in order to be placed into this class is they have to have a bone skeleton, okay? So they must have a bone skeleton. That bone skeleton is going to be lighter than a cartilage skeleton, which is good for buoyancy, and it's also stronger, right? It's going to be harder to cut through the skull of, a, of like your yellow perch that you will dissect rather than like your shark, okay? So. Um. <laughs> okay, um, so they have bone skeletons. They also have flexible fins. So um, remember your shark, when you dissected your shark, you, their fins were stiff, right? And when you do your yellow perch, you'll see that they just have, they have bones, and they actually have joints in those bones that allow for those fins to be very flexible, okay? Um, and then they just have a membrane in between each of those bones that allow for them to have their little fins. So their, their fins are much more flexible, they're much thinner, and depending on what environment they live in, what habitat they live in, what they need them for, they will be different sizes and shapes as well, okay? Um, they're also only gonna have one gill slit with a bone cover over that gill slit. So that bone cover is called the operculum, um, and that operculum is going to cover the gills and protect the gills from things that try and get into the gills and harm the gills, like parasites um, and other things like that, okay, predators. They also are gonna have a swim bladder that they're gonna use for buoyancy. We'll talk more about that. Um, and then they also are going to be at all different levels of the food chain, depending on what they eat. So they can be predators, they can be scavengers, they can be herbivores, they can um, be involved in mutualistic relationships like the cleaner fish, they can be involved in parasitic relationships, it just depends. Okay, buoyancy regulation. They have a swim bladder, okay? A swim bladder is an air-filled sac inside of their bodies, okay? So it is like, how many of you have ever been in a pool and you've had like a, a ball, right? Have you ever had like a big blow up ball and then you've like kind of like rested on the ball and like stayed up at the surface of the water? Okay, yes. Um, have you, how many of you have done that? Yes? Okay. Uh, they essentially have that just inside of their bodies, okay? And that's known as their swim bladder, okay? Um, that swim bladder is going to help to offset the density of their body, okay, and help them to float. They can adjust the amount of gas that is in that swim bladder in order to change the depth of, that they're at. So they can add gas to it or take gas out of it, depending on what they're doing, um, so that they can change depths in the water. And um, how they actually do that is a little bit counterintuitive. Because when they descend, so when they go down deeper in the water, they actually add gas to their swim bladder, okay? And if you think about it, it doesn't make sense, right? Like if you wanted to go down in the water, you wouldn't add gas to your swim bladder because if you add gas, it's like blowing up the balloon, right? What, what would happen if you blew up that balloon? So you would float, right? So it doesn't make sense. Like, why would they do that? Well, um, what they, they do that for a very specific reason. Um, and the reason is because as they go down in the water, pressure increases, right? Water is heavy. So as it, that water is pushing on that fish and on that swim bladder, um, ga the gas that's in that swim bladder gets compressed by the pressure. Um, and by adding gas into that swim bladder, it prevents that swim bladder from just like collapsing in on itself. Okay, so it allows for there to be enough gas in there to um, keep it inflated even underneath the pressure. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. And then when they come up, so when they rise, they actually release gas out of that swim bladder. Because as they rise, the pressure decreases, the gas expands, and as the gas expands, um, if they didn't let some of it out, 
it could expand too far and actually kill the fish. Does that make sense? Okay. So they actually do the opposite of what you would think. So they add gas to go down and take gas out to come up. Okay. The way that they actually change the amount of gas that's in their spoon bladder, so there's two different ways. Um, they have they can either gulp air or spit it out, um, or they can have a gas gland, this thing called a gas gland. Um, so if they gulp air, they're actually going to have like a connection between their stomach and their swim bladder. So I'm going to scroll down, and then I'll come back up if you need to know. Okay. So um, here's my little fish. Okay. So the black is the swim bladder. Okay. This is like its mouth, esophagus, and then stomach. Okay. In the red. Um, if they are going to gulp air, okay, they're going to have a little connection in between their stomach and their swim bladder. So you'll see fish, they'll actually go up to the surface and they take a little gulp of air and then they go back down. Um, what they do is they swallow that air, goes into their stomach, and then they can use that little valve to put gas into their swim bladder, okay, through their stomach. Okay. If they need to get rid of it, it works both ways. Okay, gas can come out of there into their stomach and then they spit it out. So that's why one of the reasons why if you look at a fish, if they like spit bubbles, that's, that might be one of the things that they're doing, okay, spitting some of that gas out of their swim bladder. The other way that they can change the amount of gas in their swim bladder is with a gas gland, so that's the little green dot right there. Basically, it's um, capillary blood vessels that are on a, a small part of the swim bladder, um, and as the blood runs through there, if they need to add gas to the swim bladder, they can take like carbon dioxide or oxygen, the gases that are dissolved in the blood, out of the blood and put it into their swim bladder. And then if they need to get rid of it, they can dissolve gases from the swim bladder into the blood. Blood will circulate to the gills and then can be released from the gills. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, they've got two ways that they can adjust the amount of gas that's in their swim bladder. Okay. So either diffuse it out of the blood or they'll gulp the air, spit it out. We'll talk more about this, but active swimmers, really, really active fish, predatory fish like tuna and stuff like that, actually don't have swim bladders for some good reasons. So if you're still thinking like, okay, so that's great, they add gas to their swim bladder, uh, but they're still like blowing up their swim bladder, how do they descend, right? They're still like blowing up that balloon, how do they go down? Uh, well, here's how. So if this is our little fish's swim bladder um, in the red right here, they actually have muscles that surround that swim bladder. Okay, so when they need to descend, they'll add gas to that swim bladder and then they'll take the muscles that are surrounding that swim bladder and they'll contract the muscles of the swim bladder. And when they contract it, okay, it makes the, the gas compressed, right? And makes the fish's body more dense because it's removed some of that space. Um, and that fish can descend while still adding gas to the swim bladder. Does that make sense? Okay. If they need to rise, okay, they can get rid of some of that gas, relax those muscles, let that swim bladder um, expand, and then they can rise up to the surface. Yeah? Does that make sense? You're going to have to compare and contrast this like whole buoyancy regulation thing with bony fish with chondrichthyes or cartilaginous fish. So make sure that you understand it. Right? Let's move on. Okay, so fish have swim bladders. How many of you have ever been deep sea fishing? Anybody? Anybody? Deep sea fishing? How many of you have ever caught a fish and then like pulled it up to the surface and you get it up to the surface and it's got this thing like hanging out of its mouth, right? It looks kind of nasty. Anybody? Okay. Um, what's happened, okay, in that case, what's happened is uh, that fish has a swim bladder, right? And when you hooked it and you brought it up to the surface, you brought it up faster than it could adjust the amount of gas that's in its swim bladder, okay? Kind of yeah, kind of like the bends, but opposite a little bit. Like, because the swim bladder goes from being like, you know, this big, and you bring it up too fast, and so it expands too rapidly. And so what it does, it doesn't necessarily, it, well, it can pop the swim bladder, but um, what it ends up doing is it expands so fast that it actually pushes the stomach of the fish out of the fish's mouth um, and the intestines out the other end and um, kills the fish. 
No, at that point it's going to be dead. Uh, yeah, you can release it to become food for sharks, but um, it's not going to it's not going to survive. Okay, so you can't just catch and release it. Um, that's why. So this picture is here to show you that. Okay, that's also why like we have a hard time studying a lot of the fish that live down deeper in the water because it's hard to bring them up to the surface because this happens. Okay. Um, if you slowly reeled it back up, they might have time to adjust, but it also depends on the depth that it came from because some fish actually have uh, enzymatic adaptations, so their enzymes are different, um, and they actually work better under pressure than they do at the surface pressure, so they wouldn't, it wouldn't survive even then. The way that we try to do this is like we'll put them in like pressurized boxes in the water and then bring them up, but it's hard and expensive, so it's hard to study them. Okay, so fish, some fish will not have swim water. Uh, some fish won't have swim water, okay, because they're going to be predators, uh, like this big bluefin tuna. Um, and the bluefin tuna are eating lots of different kinds of things. So they're actually going to be like going down deep in the water and then coming up to the surface very rapidly in order to capture their prey. So they can't have a swim bladder because there would be no way for them to adjust the amount of gas in there fast enough. So they don't have one. That also means, because they don't have one, that they have to keep swimming their entire life or they would sink. Okay? So tuna, very, very active fish, they swim for their entire lives. They, these type of fish actually have to um, swim in order to breathe as well. It's called ram ventilation. So they have to be swimming in order to breathe. Um, and they don't have swim bladders. So, and if they do keep swimming for their entire life, they're going to have some special adaptations that allow for them to do that, like being very streamlined, like having um, little grooves in their body wall in order to, like, when they put their fins up, they can put their fins up and it's, like, flush to the body to reduce drag. No big protruding eyes, okay, no scales.